Let's open up a picture, and you might recognize this. It's a photograph of my little Andy's mint boxes that I made right before Christmas. And I want to watermark it before I post it to the web. So what I'm going to do now, if you look over in your layers, you'll see that that is the one that is selected. That is the one that shows up in my layers. That is a one layer image. If I click on the watermark that we just made, it now shows me the other layers, including the three that we want. But look how the links are gone. That's because we've got it clicked on the purple layer. So if I drag this now into here, it's going to drag that purple rectangle. I want to click on one of the par parts that I want, and it's going to show all the linked parts. And now when I go to select all, it will have selected all three of those. All I have to do, if you don't already have this little tool, click it over here to get your select tool, and just click it and drag it into your photograph. And you see that it fell right into my photograph there. Let's move this out of the way and move this over so we can see what we're doing. And it came in here very small. So now, because it's all one piece, because we grouped them together, we can stretch it and resize it and move it all around as one image. And we can put it wherever we want and whatever size we want on our picture. And now I want to decide where I want it. And so what you have to do is you have to decide which parts of your watermark are the most important for people to be able to read. Obviously, I want them to be able to read the copyright, and I also want them to be able to read my blog. So I think right here is a good spot because those are readable, and yet part of my watermark is still over the main part of my image. If I were to do a, a tiny little watermark and put it up here, it would be real easy for somebody to crop it out. So you don't want to use do that. You do want to copy, or I'm sorry, you do want to resize it big enough and position it so that part of it is over your image. So I'm going to put it right here, and I think that's a good spot for it. I'm going to get, click check, click off on it so I can see what it looks like, and I'm happy with that. Um, with the position of it. I can still read it, but I can still clearly see the picture as well. Now, just because we had it grouped doesn't mean that we can't alter it. If you see when I put my cursor over it, it highlights each individual part. And if I go back over here, I can do the same thing. I can now go to, for instance, the shape in the background, and it doesn't show up much at all on here. So 20% for this particular picture, if I want that to show, was a little bit too little. And so I need to slide that back up to about 30, and I kind of like the way that looks. Um, my name, I think, looks pretty good. might want to lighten that just a tad. So let's go down to, like, 43 looks good. And then let's do... Let's leave the copyright where it is because uh, it's kind of white on white and we really want to be able to see that. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So once you get it to where you want it, then you do the same thing that we did when we were making the watermark. We link all the parts together. So we want the copyright, we click on that, we want the name, we want the shape, and we want the photograph itself. We hit shift and hit that last one and it highlights all of those. These are already linked, but if we click the link now, it's going to add the background, and those four pieces are all going to be linked. Now we're ready to save it, so we're going to go to File, Save As, because we don't want to just do Save. We want to retain the photo, the original photo, the way it is without the watermark. Um, and we're going to save this as a JPEG so that we can upload it to the web. And it's going to name it Copy, because I've already got one called Andy's Boxes, Cindy McVeigh. But what I want to do is I want to name it so that I know it's watermarked. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that. And I do that by putting WM. That indicates to me that it's been watermarked. And now I can hit Save. And again, I've already done this earlier for practice, so it's asking me if I want to replace it. And I do. Um, it comes up to this dialog box where you can change your image options. High, the higher your quality, the larger your file is going to be, which is going to slow down loading of your pages. I find that generally medium is pretty good. It's still a fairly large file. You can even go down to six. See your quality here. And just, it's still a medium file. It's not too big, not too small that you lose um, a lot of quality if you blow it up. So, click OK and you have now saved a watermarked picture ready for upload to your computer and you can have peace of mind that it's safe. 
Thanks for watching. I hope to be doing more for you and I really appreciate all of the support that all of you have given me over this last week. Thanks again and good night.